Uh, yeah, so thank you for coming. Um, we are um, from a company called Adilion, and um, yeah, we are search consultants. Um, at, at Adelian, so uh, we are quite a few of us. So you can find us on, on the yeah, in the in the conference. We we are doing a lot of consulting around search, and uh, we are also developing a technology called A2, which uh, it's a vertical solution for e-commerce and and enterprise search. So yeah, given this experience, we will kind of try to talk about what is to be a search engine administrator. So first of all, why is this talk? Uh, what is it about? So the main goal and the, the idea, the first idea of this talk was to look back on our jobs, our experiences, so maybe kind of a midlife crisis of a search engineer, I don't know, and to capitalize on uh, what we done, what we learned, and so we imagine that the best way to do that, because we usually don't take time to do this kind of look back, is to, to propose a talk, and uh, hopefully it was accepted. So here is uh, our talk. So follow us uh, on, on this path. Uh, so we will talk about the search engine as a living thing. So we see it as a, as a ever evolving uh, entity. We talk about the context, in which context do we work and do we, uh, are we interacting with. Then we talk about the keys of success, what we see as the keys of success of a good search system. We will focus on the different roles that we can uh, have in, in the context of a search project, the tools that we use in general and we find very helpful, and the conclusion. Um, so we start kind of with a conclusion already. So the search engine is, is a living thing. Um, Search has the particularity that you cannot just uh, throw a software there, uh, install it, and and it, it it keeps working like this alone. Uh, you have to um, constantly uh, improve it uh, for different reasons. Uh, depending on the domain in which you're you're in, uh, you have seasonality. If, for example, if if you're working in e-commerce. Uh, especially, for example, in, in the case, specific case of, um, of food, you have a lot of seasonality there. You also have, uh, also in e-commerce, you have the level of stocks, you have uh, uh, the life cycle of different products or the life cycle of your documents. Uh, and uh, you have also events that happen during the year, so you have to adjust your, uh, your search um, search engine you have things that come uh, like in the news and you have to adapt just like you adapt a website uh, and you also have the users that evolve themselves so they their expectation change so you have either two paths from here uh, either you just leave the search engine as you install it and as you configured it in the beginning or um, you can like uh, adapt it constantly so the search engine evolves. Um, so the, um, the context, uh, the, there are different contexts in which we are uh, placing the search engine administrator. And depending on the context, the, the life of the search engine administrator is not the same. And uh, the, also the skills, the, um, the people uh, around the search engine administrator are not, are not the same. Uh, you have a first use case which is really, really um, like uh, specific, which is the e-commerce uh, use case. Um, in this case, uh, the relevance, for example, is not uh, in terms of text and what matches and what does not match is a text. The relevance is, to, is in terms of stocks, uh, marketing, agenda, uh, events, um, yeah, um, 
personalization also because in e-commerce you have to really take into account what the user wants and where the user is located and stuff like that. Uh, a different use case is the enterprise search use case where the, um, the goal of the search engine administrator is actually the productivity of its users. Uh, so uh, you're not selling goods uh, and the search engine uh, uh, is configured based on like different criteria and as a search engine administrator you are like your KPIs are mostly connected to the productivity of the of your colleagues or users that are, are using your search engine. You also have an issue with the security because in this context which is enterprise search um, documents are really like sensible uh, sensitive so uh, you have to take care which has access to each which document and then you have some hybrid uh, hybrid search engines yeah. uh, one straightforward example is where you have an e-commerce search engine that sells goods and also uh, is meant to be a reference website a reference website means that uh, it's, um, it also has blog posts, technical documentation, stuff like that, uh, which are there to like to make the user come back to your website and to consider it as a reference website and not only an e-commerce web website. Mm -hmm. And there's also, yes, you also have specialized use cases that do not really fit in one of these use cases. Like for instance, um, uh, scientific databases or uh, legal uh, content, which is generally high added value content, and the search is really uh, critical for professionals to leverage this content. But we did not really focus on it, but it's also a use case. <coughs> so go, going back to to the root and the, let's say the the geist of our job, what is search about? So we think that basically search is about leveraging signals in order to fulfill a user's need, so it's, whether it's a need for information, for a product, for any, anything that it can um, be in search for. So, um, <clears throat> and we did moving signals. So as Lucian said uh, a, few, a few seconds ago, the, the search is uh, operating in a moving context. So the signals that we are using to, to fulfill this need and to uh, build the search are moving. So for instance, here, we try to, um, to show and to, to make visible the different signals that we use to, to build a search system. So usually, and maybe in the first place, when you start a search system, you work with the query and the content. So first you have the content, you index the content, and then you try to have a query which matches this content. And you, you, you have the query and you make them match. But you can have more, you can have user knowledge and domain knowledge, and these things usually make the difference. And so here we have uh, the different uh, topics linked to users, domain, content, and query that we usually leverage uh, to build the search system. You also have to take into account that the data changes. So even if your query is correct today on the current data, tomorrow the data will change and the query might not be correct. Yes. So we keep an eye on all those uh, entities and things. So once we have our, our context and our data, let's say, in, in, an, in the general sense, we must define what is success, what, what is to fulfill a user's need. And so we, here we are in what we call the KPIs jungle. We have a lot of possible indicators to indicate that search is successful. So first, we, we have the user's indicators. What do users say about your search system? So in e-commerce, we often have NPS, not always specific to, to a search engine but, or, or to the search system of your e-commerce site, but it can be a good indicator. 
you have of course business indicators so you it, it's a, a way to to see if your search or your e-commerce system in general is working well revenue etc you have on the other way on the other side technical indicators search time indexing queue size uh, uptime of your system. You have also relevance indicators. So these indicators are also very useful, but in general, how will you use them? Which are the good ones to use? Uh, so in general, the most used is the last one, uh, famous LGTM, so looks good to me. Uh, it's the indicator that uh, we use when we do not have a, a better one. It looks good to me, so it's okay. <laughs> so here is the way we process, so in general, to organize these indicators and to formalize them and have um, a, a better way to define the success of, of the search system. So we start with the, the goal, the, the, the center of the target. And with the business, we try to expand this to actionable metrics or KPIs. So first, the success can be increase the sales, but also maybe increase the profit or the market share. It can lead to different indicators. And then we extend it to um, measurable uh, things, measurable quantities linked to the search, so for instance average rank of the product when it's added to the cart, the number of click on a search result page to cart, the number of zero result search, etc. One which is very interesting is a rephrase rate when a user does a search and the next action is to rephrase a search because obviously it did not yield satisf satisfying results. All those are the, the measurable KPIs, and we process like this, starting by defining success with generally the business owners. Yes. Um, so, uh, in order for the for, for the search engine administrator to be uh, like um, um, relevant in his work, uh, you, you need to monitor. You need to monitor a lot. You need to know what's happening, uh, and. Um, the, the the first question that that arises is what what to monitor uh, how how do you uh, keep track of of how the search engine is used um, so first of all you have to monitor the um, the relevance of your search engine uh, so this is defined in terms of like business needs uh, and you also have some other monitoring um, uh, tools and and uh, graphs that you need. For example, um, when you're talking about an enterprise search engine, uh, your search engine might not be relevant because of crawling errors, because there's a, an intranet that's not accessible to the search engine and actually your data is not there or your data is there but it's uh, um, not complete. Um, you have to monitor yeah, errors on data because you, you might have access to the data but uh, the data is corrupted or is simply uh, not appropriate to be indexed into a search engine as it is. So you have to first uh, like uh, take care of the data to, to clean it, to, to uh, improve it, to um, extend it. And also you have to keep an eye on the, on the user satisfaction. So user being like your colleagues, uh, if it's a, an enterprise search or, or the customers of your e-commerce website. Uh, yeah, so as a search engine administrator, you have to keep an eye on kind of all of these things. Yeah, so business, data and infrastructure and uh, end users. Um, so we mentioned the KPIs, uh, some of them, so uh, the, another challenge is how to define the KPI. So it's also the job of the search engine administrator to like be the the one that uh, suggests which KPIs should be put in place. And uh, yeah, the KPIs are are, are important. Um, 
you also have uh, domain specific issues uh, and you have to handle them so it's things that are related really to the to, to your business yes so, so quite a lot of challenges uh, and we try to organize them to to focus on the different roles of a search administrator and so uh, as you see I, I like the mind maps uh, so I grow another one um, so at the, at the center, so the search administrator or search engine or a specialist or call it as you want, we, we find this way to, to call our job, so search administrator. So we have a level of relationship with all the stakeholders in general with the project we deal with. So in e-commerce, we have the voice of the customer, the, uh, the Verba teams of the customer, which are usually connected more formally in e-commerce, uh, can be collected also in enterprise search, uh, beside the coffee machine, somewhere uh, like this. Uh, you have the business owners in general. So with the business owners, we have a lot of education to do in general, explain how it works, the challenges, define the KPIs we talked about earlier, design some tools we'll talk about just after, the tools to empower the, the, the stakeholders. With the product owners, we do more project management stuff, so UX design, search story, etc. acceptance criteria also. Then we interact because we are IT specialists, so we interact with IT. So IT ops, which can be also not only operators of search, but users of search, because a lot of uh, monitoring tools use also internally search engines. So we also sometimes have a double role uh, in, in the project, one for the business search as a business tool and as an ops tool. We interact a lot, of course, with the IT dev team for trainings, for software design. We also contribute to the development. We interact with the data team. So in general, you have data teams that collect as much as data as possible. So we feed the lake. Uh, we contribute to feature engineering because we can help understand the data that are collected, etc. We also use back the data to collect signals, which will also help us doing our job of relevance engineers. And of course, we interact. So I put it uh, maybe a little further away with knowledge sources, because we have to also adapt to, to knowledge. So it's not really related to our job inside the project, but it's something that we must always keep in mind to keep a link with uh, in increasing our, our knowledge. So the search engine administrator also helps defining the roadmap. So if your search engine is not yet the ideal one, it's also the role of the search engine administra and, and administrator to, to figure out what's next, what's to be developed next. So, and yeah, uh, to, uh, defined and uh, and prioritize the backlog. Okay, so as I just said, uh, one of our roles is to empower the stakeholders to use uh, some tools. Uh, we don't want to do everything by hand. We don't want every team to rely on on uh, our job. So. Our role is also to design with the stakeholders what tools can help them better do their job, have quicker release cycles, uh, faster uh, go to market, etc. So empower first the business people. I put merchandising, so we talk about search and dizing nowadays also. Uh, so give the controls to um, adjust the way the search works for business people and not for technical people. Empower the reporting teams, so giving them 
uh, analytics tool, dashboards, and also empower the data teams, as I said, to automatically uh, export uh, some data and help them uh, do their data engineer jobs, basically. So tools that we build or we also use existing tools, of course. Um, so there's this tool that we call Business Console, which is uh, kind of the ultimate user experience uh, for, for a search engine administrator. Um, it's not necessarily a single tool, so you can have it like, usually you have plenty of tools that are there. Uh, but uh, if you manage to bring them together to have just one entry point, which is the, this business console, which is the like the um, the um, the wheel that that the search engine administrator is is, is using to 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 control everything, then then it's fine. So the. Um, you, as a search engine administrator, you have to like keep an eye on all the three parts of a search engine. So this is actually taken from our architecture, from our software, and you have the ingest part, which is like crawling, transforming the data, gathering the data, and ultimately indexing it into into your search engine. You have the search engine technology, the core search engine te technology itself which needs to be configured, uh, which needs to be integrated and all that. And you also have the search services. And to a certain extent, you also have the UI and uh, the connectors to different da data sources. So um, in any case, a search engine administrator has to keep an eye on all these, um, all these uh, parts of a search engine. And we believe that all these are part of a search engine. Um, and if you can provide the, the search engine administrator a tool, a centralized tool that, that uh, uh, keeps uh, an eye on all these things, then, then that's, the, that's the best user experience. If I go into details, uh, so uh, what could you offer to, to a search engine administrator so it's, it, it has most of the tools that he needs? This is an example from a search engine based on Elasticsearch, but it's the same with solar or, or other technologies. Um, so you need something that allows uh, the configuration of the core search engine itself. So that's the, that's the config, uh, that's the config uh, uh, module. Um, so th these, these tools here should be technical enough so you have a lot of power but also high level in order to like to make abstraction of the of the technology that's be behind that uh, then you also need uh, access to logs all the logs you can get so uh, this actually logs uh, module needs to have access to indexing to uh, the search services to your ui logs uh, analytics and all that then the pilot module is the one that empowers the search engine administrator to to act to to do things to like for example relaunch a crawling relaunch an indexing uh, re-index uh, some data uh, clean some data um, change the mapping change a query change a change a change a search query and all that uh, yes so yeah, actually, there's a there's an arrow missing there because the pilot can also act on the queries. You also have to have a debug module, which is which empowers the search engine administrator to know what's happening in the search engine. Like when you see a result on the on the on the front page, uh, you have the the details that tell you why that result is first and that this result is second. So this is the debug module. And then you have a lot of what we call helpers. For example, when a search engine administrator defines synonyms, okay, either he, either they know um, the domain and they can define, define the synonyms because they, they know the business, uh, but you also can provide helpers that uh, will actually detect automatically synonyms. Um, 
there was a talk or there will be a talk about that uh, uh, in, in this conference about how to automatically detect the synonyms. We are not saying that you can you have to automate the synonym definition. It's still the search engine administrator that has the last word and has to do the verification. Mm -hmm. But uh, this uh, this tool can can help. Uh, you also have some non-regression tools. There has been a talk by people from Auto that presented some tool like this. Um, yeah, you had NDCG or all that. Okay, so just an example to illustrate a tool that we build with our colleagues uh, for search engine administrative tasks. So it's an example in, a, in an e-commerce website. So the administrator, so the business people can do a search, run a search, see the result as a customer would see, plus a score explanation here. So why the score computed by the search engine is like this. So it's kind of mathematical, but you can have very detailed explanation on the score calculations. Then you can act on the way the search is run. So by, for instance, selecting some facets, moving the facets, etc., And then after uh, committing the change, so you, you uh, save the change that you did, you can reproduce the search, so search again, and see the evolution of the result list for instance, this product is two places higher in the result list. This one has got, went down, etc. So you can really evaluate the impact of your uh, changes on the search system before putting it uh, in production. And this particular tool uh, reinforces the looks good to me uh, uh, <laughs> metric. Yeah, <laughs> metric. <laughs> Uh, in the context of um, uh, enterprise search, but not, not only, it can also apply to, to e-commerce, uh, you have uh, sometimes uh, a lot of heterogeneous data. And the tool that you can provide to your search engine administrator is like a, a data modeling tool, you know, it's, uh, which is not really like uh, something that's, that's well defined. Uh, you, you have, for example, people from Elastic that built uh, things that call uh, Elastic Common Schema. So this was for them to empower those that use uh, data from coming from logs to have the same format. So the administrator will just say, oh, I have a new data source here. My job is just to map fields from this new data source to the common schema that, that's, uh, that's uh, the, the centralized one. Uh, so, when your search engine uses a lot of heterogeneous data and data coming from different data sources, you can empower him with a schema, for example, that would be like the ideal schema of the data. And when a new data source uh, arrives, uh, like you provide a tool that allows you to, to, to go into this. Okay, so, so we saw a lot of tools. Uh, a way to collect data, tools that are basically manual tools, not uh, the task of the search engineers, but the business users. They must to always watch how the search is performing, do the adjustment, assess the impact of the adjustments. But maybe we could, with all this data and all these evaluations we collect, cannot we have some kind of magic AI uh, system which could crush all the data and make the search engine uh, adapt automatically. Yeah, so you could ask, is, is, the, is, uh, is AI the end of the search engine administrator because you can just plug AI and then the search engine will configure itself and, uh, and uh, evolve by its own? Um, well, it helps, it helps, but we think that uh, it's, it's, uh, it's not really the case. Um, this is an example from, from another talk that we gave, uh, and that uh, takes, I mean, is the conclusion of uh, what we learned when implementing learning to rank, which is like, somehow supposed to like 
automate some administrative tasks there and to adapt to the data, to adapt to the users and all that. Uh, yeah, so I will not get into detail, but details, but um, the conclusions were that uh, the part that was done manually, uh, and we actually did this test for a large e-commerce website and we kind of uh, like moved back from learning to rank to like a manual or semi-manual administration because uh, a search engine administrator that knows the business and knows how the users interact with the search engine uh, uh, eventually uh, behaves better than uh, than okay. any AI um, <coughs> algorithm. Uh, you also have, yeah, so uh, you have Trey Granger that uh, used to be a speaker in this conference that uh, said that all this uh, AI stuff, it's kind of a buzzword salad, so... <coughs> it will not really replace the, the search engine administrator. And if you want to know a little more about uh, about this, uh, there's a talk that we gave last year uh, at Buzzwords. It was not in, in real life. It was uh, uh, a, a remote conference. Uh, you can uh, you can see more about uh, our opinion about AI. <laughs> okay. And another link to also go further in the, in the topic is um, a conference that uh, Peter Fries gave uh, at Haystack uh, in 2018. So we like this uh, kind of cycle of the search operation, so the, how we make search adapt. So in general, we evaluate and then we run the lab wheel so we do offline relevant evaluations, improvements, automatic testing, etc. Un until we have a satisfying lab cycle and then we go to the uh, operation cycle. So uh, we cited this, uh, this uh, diagram because we found it very interesting on how to uh, represent the evolutions of a search system. Uh, apply to a project. Yeah, and we get back to the fact that the search engine is a living thing, mm. so it has to constantly evolve, uh, being in the, in the lab or in the real life. So, quick conclusion because we are reaching the end of this presentation. So, what we believe are the success factors of a search engine. Define your KPIs first. Know what is a good search. It's often not really easy because uh, the, the relevance is usually in the eye of the beholder, of the searcher. So uh, everyone has its own definition. So find some KPIs. Try to find some proxy KPIs to evaluate what is a successful search. It's not always easy. Uh, Empower your stakeholders, give them tools, use tools, uh, build tools, collect as much as data as you can, even if you don't know why in the first place, you will maybe hopefully have data engineers or data scientists which can help you uh, use those data to improve the signals that will be uh, your, your uh, prime matter to, to work the search relevance. And so a uh, little focus on the tools to remind what tools are really useful in, in our jobs and our uh, customers' job. So at the end, be the search gardener. We say that for us, the search engine is a living thing. We compare it to a garden. So the evolution of the garden is up to you. Will it be a, a wild garden, a wild life? And, or will it be a fruitful, it's up to you. Okay, so thank you thank for you your attention. For your attention. Anybody has a question? Yep. Thanks for the talk. Uh, how do you balance uh, 
allowing your admins uh, to modify things manually in your console versus having uh, declarative configurations. So the, the question was how we do we balance the manual configuration with? Declarative, having like a declarative uh, file where you, you, you can put it on Git or like you, it's like a more declarative approach uh, versus okay. you know, just manually. A more automated things. approach. Or, yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, the, um, you, you have to have both, uh, actually. So uh, the, um, and, and the tools that you give to your search engine administrator can be technical enough, and you can also do some training, for example. So the, the search engine administrator will actually uses Git and, and actually, uh, like, uh, if the software that you provide, for example, allows you to export a configuration, then you can even empower your search engine administrator to, to push it to Git and to, to have a, like, a, a semi developer approach there. Um, so yeah, uh, it's, um, it's, it's kind of a hybrid approach. You, you have to, to, to use both and to adapt actually to to your environment. Yeah. Just to complete, if if you, for instance, if you consider a mapping in Elasticsearch, in our case, the user, the, the business user, can really modify the mapping, the real mapping. So it modifies by uh, changing uh, maybe the field type or data format, date format, thing like that. And the mapping is changed. It's committed with a new change. It's applied on the index, and the the user knows that when the mapping changes, it has to reindex. So it will click on reindex. So the, the real mapping will be changed. And after, it's up to us to save it in Git or uh, somewhere. But it gives a real control on the, on the, on, the, on the real file that usually we edit uh, on on a text editor. Do you have, uh, or thank you for the talk <laughs> at first. So, um, do you have any uh, good practices or uh, references for finding KPIs in an enterprise search context? In enterprise search, uh, it's usually kind of difficult to find good uh, KPIs. We have, uh, because uh, the, here also the needs can be very different, the information needs. Um, so uh, we can, in, in, uh, in enterprise search, we often tend to recommend uh, expert judgments. So we try to uh, have some domain experts run some search. So maybe we take the top 100 searches or top 200, we give them to uh, uh, the domain expert in the company, and we tell them, okay, run the search and give a, a relevance grade to each result. So we have, there are some tools. Uh, there is a tool called Cupid uh, by Open Source Connections. It's an open source tool uh, that can help collecting relevance judgments and expert judgments, and it will uh, help you build a relevance. Uh, basis of truth that you can use to evaluate your search. So when you do some changes, you add some documents, you add a new, uh, I don't know, you have a, you add new users, you, add, you, you, you have an evolution in your search, search system, you can evaluate if the search is still performing well. So usually a lot of, uh, let's say, uh, domain system experts, domain uh, subject expert, uh, you also have the typical classic uh, uh, KPIs like zero result search, uh, search rephrasing, so the next action is uh, to run a new search, uh, so, but it's not very specific to enterprise search, but it's useful in, in general in all search systems. Um, yeah, what, what I'm um, observing is that a 
you, in the enterprise, in the end, you need a business case. Mm -hmm. And talking about KPIs changes the movement from talking about costs in, uh, to, to talking about uh, use. Mm -hmm. And this is a great movement because in an enterprise, always costs are the first thing to talk about. Mm -hmm. And if you have KPIs, you must translate those into something measurable, like mm -hmm. euros mm -hmm. <laughs> or dollars. Yeah. And uh, especially if you're talking about enterprise search, it's really hard to... Um, Yeah, to, to, to figure sure out how much yeah. minutes do you save yeah, the return uh, by on using investment. the search. Yes, and we know every enterprise search vendor has, uh, okay, uh, with our product, uh, productivity increased by uh, 50% or a typical uh, knowledge uh, worker spends uh, 20% of time uh, searching for information. Yes, it's, uh, it's difficult to, to, f to show the return on investment. Um, but it, something um, when, when we are, uh, especially with uh, remote work today, uh, I think uh, enterprise search becomes uh, more than a commodity. It's uh, something really mandatory uh, for every company. You can, uh, yeah, it's, it ends up to uh, things related to user satisfaction you know if if you have like a, a little box there that uh, that will ask input from users on a search results page and um, and user users like give a good feedback and they are so like the the user experience is is is, is better than so yeah the, the kpi would be something related to the happiness of the of the employees for example for those that that use the search engine Uh, and also to, to the productivity, for example, but it is difficult to measure it, but you have to find something connected to that. Yeah, so happiness and productivity. Yeah. Okay, so unfortunately we ran out of time. Thank you, Lucian and Vincent. Thanks for the talk. Have a warm applause, please. <laughs> <laughs>